So I'm buzzing today because last night was the first clear night we've had since the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction over a month ago in December. And I had my um, DSLR Astro modified early in December, got it back a week or so later, and I've had no chance to use it yet. But yesterday was a proper clear night and I had the chance to give it a try out. My name is John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there but in the meantime let's crack on with today's video. So I've got a Canon 800D SLR camera that I use exclusively for astrophotography and the reason that I wanted to get it modified was that the modification increases the sensitivity of the camera uh, to the light at the red end of the, the light spectrum by about 75%. And the red end of the light spectrum is typically uh, light given off by hydrogen alpha emissions. And hydrogen alpha emissions are things that uh, are given out by uh, nebulae and star forming regions. And these are precisely the areas that we want to uh, photograph. Now a normal camera has a, a colour correction filter to prevent the camera from being too sensitive to the, the red end. The chip itself is actually already sensitive to the red end. It's just we put a filter in to cut out that sensitivity. If the colour correction filter wasn't in the camera, what would happen is in, in your daytime photography, all of your pictures would have a kind of pinky or, or reddish tinge. So the filters put in to make the camera sensor behave like the human eye does. On astrophotography, we can just about see the uh, section of the red end spectrum that we're interested in, but not very well. And so this filter cuts out 75% of the, um, the good stuff that's being given out by the, the, the nebulae. So the idea of doing the mod is to get rid of this filter to enable the camera to collect all this light that's coming in. People are obviously um, very nervous about getting their camera modified, including me, because uh, what you're doing is taking a perfectly good DSLR camera and basically invalidating its warranty and making it virtually useless for, for daytime photography. Uh, so I was pretty keen to see how we got on. So yesterday afternoon then, um, all three of the weather apps that I tend to use all seemed to agree that there was going to be a clear period between about 6pm and around midnight. And it's very rare for the, the three apps to agree. And looking at the sky at about 4pm, it was beautifully clear all around, not a cloud in sight. The only thing potentially making life a bit more difficult than it might have been was the moon is sitting at, I think, 77% yesterday, uh, which isn't ideal for uh, taking faint nebulae. But nonetheless, I was going to take that because I hadn't been able to do anything for weeks. Given the clear skies at four o'clock, I was horrified to discover at six o'clock that the clouds had started to roll in. Um, but fortunately they were just a brief 15 minute passing set of clouds and so I was confident enough after that to take out my mount here which is my uh, larger setup the Skywatcher EQM35 mount along with a small 60mm TS Optics refractor. Get your attention can I come close I don't know how to play this our hands touch once or twice feeling kind of hypnotized I'm looking at you and I feel the tension you know this could be like heaven I am right here doing my best to make you feel like I do. I'd had a lot of deliberation over the afternoon as to what my targets were going to be for that evening 
and what I decided on was three targets, very closely packed together, um, but classic targets for this time of year. The first was going to be the Flame and Horsehead Nebula that I'd attempted uh, a week or so ago, having got up at 2am because I noticed there was a clear spell, but failed really at that. And I was also going to do the Rosette Nebula, which is one of my favourite targets for this time of year. Both of those two I was going to shoot with the modified Canon 800D camera. But in case there was a problem with that camera or I couldn't process the images, to be on the safe side and to make sure I hadn't wasted the evening, um, I was going to do a banker target of the Orion Nebula just using my sort of day-to-day -day SLR camera that I use when I go on holiday and such like. Um, so yeah, that was the plan and uh, we'll see how it got on. I'm now doing a run of exposures on the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula which I uh, failed spectacularly at a few nights ago and I'm going to do about 45 to 50 one minute exposures and then switch to the Orion Nebula and currently I'm using my newly modified or astro modified Canon 800 DSLR first time out on it so I'll be interested to see how it pans out you can, however, see the Flame Nebula and the horse head quite clearly in the, the single exposure, albeit the whole thing sort of washed out with um, the kind of orangey tint that these things have when you're using a modified camera. Okay, this is the last shot in my run at the Flame and Horsehead Nebula. I've got about an hour's worth. Um, Orion Nebula's now high enough in the sky for me to take a pop at that. So I'm going to switch over targets. So I now switch targets to the Orion Nebula. I changed my camera to my unmodified sort of bog standard day-to-day -day holiday type DSLR camera and popped inside for a warm up because um, the temperature was dropping rapidly. It was about minus two at, at this point. So I'm now finishing off the um, exposures for the Orion Nebula. Uh, because this is a different camera, I'm I was using this as a backup. Um, my, the camera that I did the Flame Nebula on is my modified camera. And I didn't know for sure that it was going to work properly because it was the first time I'd used it. So I took the Orion Nebula pictures with a different camera just so I'd have something out of the night. But I've just been processing the pictures of the Flame Nebula and they're easily the best that I've ever taken of that target. So since it's clear, I'm going to finish off the Orion Nebula now and then slew across to the Rosette Nebula using my modified camera again and see what that can do. And then I'm going to probably call it a night. If I can get three targets out of one night, then that kind of makes up for the month or six weeks of next to nothing. So these are just the last couple of shots of the Orion Nebula and then I'm going to switch over. What I found with the Orion Nebula shots was I could only really take 30 second exposures um, anything longer than that and I was really blowing out the core so for the Orion Nebula I just took 30 minutes of 30 second exposures uh, whereas for the Flame Nebula I'd taken an hour's worth of, of 60 second exposures um, but there's a shot shown here of a single exposure off the camera from the Orion Nebula. So my last target for the night was the um, Rosette Nebula, which is just a, a bit to the left of the um, 
Orion Nebula and up a little bit. <clears throat> and for these, I was taking um, back to taking one minute exposures again. Um, I'd reduced for the uh, modified camera because I was back now on the, the, the modified camera the ISO down to 800 both for the Flame Nebula and the um, Rosette Nebula whereas normally I shoot at ISO 1600 it may be that the modification to the camera makes it that much more sensitive um, but again there's a single exposure shown here and you can see uh, how almost washed out that single exposure looks. You can just about make out the stars, but, but not much else in it. Um, but after my experiences earlier on with a quick process of the Flame Nebula, I was uh, quite confident that I was going to get something out of the Rosette Nebula. But uh, once I've done all the processing of everything, we'll come back and have a little look. Okay, so all the processing's now done. The Orion Nebula came out more or less how I thought it would because that was using a unmodified camera and not a particularly sophisticated one at that. It's a little bit noisy. Um, but nonetheless, I'm pleased with the picture. But the picture of the Flame and Horsehead and the Rosette Nebula really took me aback when I, when I saw them. I couldn't believe it. Um, the extra detail in there over and above what I was getting last year, for example, uh, for me is astounding. So if anybody's wondering whether to get their camera modified, assuming that it's only used for um, astronomy use, it, it's well worth doing. It costs between 80 and uh, 105 or 110 pound, depending on the, the model of the camera. And it gives you a significant jump up in quality of picture. Had I taken two or three hours worth of exposure, um, I think I would have got some absolutely brilliant results out of it. Um, I had to pack it in in the end because uh, everything got iced up outside. It is actually possible to use an Astro modified camera for daylight use. Um, you can simply buy a, a clip-in filter that replaces the one that um, got taken out but ideally it's better if you've got a modified camera if it stays purely for for astro use. So before putting the uh, pictures up at the end of this video to sum up then I'm um, pretty chuffed that I had that modification done and I look forward to um, trying to get some of the nebulae in the Milky Way in the summer and uh, I think it also gives you decent results on stuff like galaxies and things. Um, but really, it's best suited for, for nebula. I think the next step for me would be to get a um, tri-band type filter so that I can shoot when the moon's full. These tri-band filters will cut out, apart from light pollution, um, cuts out light coming from the moon and really only lets through light coming from emission nebula typically. Uh, so that's really good. That increases the number of days that you can um, do your astronomy on. But that'll be something for um, later on in the year. So uh, yeah, on that note, I'll put the pictures up now. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Thank you.